Thank you for rejoining us. Uh, again, I'm Kyla McGregor, your trainer, and we just wanted to really quickly introduce uh, a new MSL employee as of like last week. His name is Gil. Well, you go to mind. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. I'm the new uh, Montana Library Network Technical Support person. Um, and happy to be here. This is indeed uh, quite literally uh, day seven uh, of uh, <laughs> senior. And my very first uh, conference, MLA conference, I've uh, been able to attend, even though I worked at the public library five years before this. So it's been uh, quite overdue. But yeah, I'm uh, excited to meet all of you. Don't be shy about chatting, and I understand I'll be helping out a whole bunch of people in this room and outside of the room as well. And uh, yeah, once again, my name's Gil. And Can you tell me how you spell your name? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit unusual. It's short for Guilherme, but uh, in emails you will see G-U-I-L. Uh, I just go by Gil. How about your last name? I'm writing the minutes, that's why. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, Poolsma, uh, P-O-E-L-S-M-A. I got the uh, Dutch last name Brazilian cartoon. Oh, <laughs> it sounds very exotic, but my name actually it's uh, William Henry. So yeah, oh, it's yeah, as yeah. simple. <laughs> but anyways, my name's Gil, and uh, yeah, just don't be shy, and I'll be sure to uh, meet as many people as possible this week. Thank you for giving me some time to talk. I'm so excited to have you here, Gil. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, so I'm running the meeting now. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> just ask for a motion. Just uh, for a motion. Okay, uh, I'm asking for a motion to accept the minutes from the last member's meeting. I move to accept I Karen Mayhall, Skyview High School, this is Public Schools. Move to accept the 2023 fall minutes as written. Also, that John Cole, Missoula Public. So we have a second. So all those in favor, say aye or type aye in the chat. Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed, say nay or type nay in the chat. Would one of you want to share the agenda on the screen? Do you have? We'll be putting the agenda on your screen shortly. So did that pass? Yes. Yes, yeah, so uh -oh. I do believe it did. Okay. So uh, next on uh, our next action item is to vote on the fiscal year 2025 budget. I think we'll probably um, skip mm -hmm. all of that. Skip and, all of that. And go straight to the MSC update. Okay. Just because <laughs> that's Amy, and uh, she, <laughs> yeah. she's the best to speak to you all about all of that. So I'm literally talking to the commission right now. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's so. actually speaking right now. So there we go. Good job, Amy. <laughs> um, so we're just going to the system update. So gov delivery, Mel, is that something you wanted to talk about? Sure, I can talk about gov delivery. Um, so uh, hopefully you all have been getting our gov delivery newsletters. Uh, we switched in January from using the MSC Discuss Listserv because it was unwildly and we couldn't really maintain it or add new people or make any edits. So hopefully you're all receiving the newsletter. If you're not, we ask that you please check your junk mail folder. Um, and if you aren't getting them or there's any issues, just open up a health desk ticket and we can get you set up. Um, anybody can subscribe to the newsletter. If you have an IT person that needs to know if the system's gonna be down or updated, uh, front desk staff that need to know helpful hints for circulation, anybody can sign up if we encourage it. Um, and then if there's any questions on Gov Delivery or any other platform. Is that just for MSC updates, like our catalog updates? Yes, it's our, our bi-weekly newsletter that goes out or we send it out uh, if there's emergencies. If there's emergencies. So if something's down or there's a problem, yeah. but also need. Yeah. 
And then we ask that you do subscribe to the larger MSL GUP delivery uh, for whatever is applicable for your information, but we're more narrow focused. All right. Um, and then service now, I believe, is Kyle. Oh, the archive. oh, I wasn't going to, but we do have an archive in our help desk system. Um, so if you miss something or you're looking through and you're just trying to quickly remember, oh, I saw that. What was that in? We do have a list. It is linked to the bottom of every Gov delivery, so you can get there easy access. That link will be changing. The archive will be changing because uh, our service desk is now changing within the next month or so. Um, and Kylie is going to talk more about that and give you a kind of a brief walkthrough. Sorry, grappling with the lack of Amy. Yes. <laughs> so shortly, um, what I'm going to show you is what the landing page most likely will look like for you when you go to open a ticket using our new ticket system and help desk, which is called ServiceNow. Um, and these lovely system administrators are making my life way easier and I'm making theirs a lot harder. So uh, thanks for being patient. But be basically what's gonna happen is similar to the landing page you see now, if you go to the generic page and you want to open a ticket, you'll select which portion of the state library you're trying to open a ticket with the same goes for the knowledge base. If you're searching for articles, we have uh, an MSC knowledge base that we're working on moving articles over to. Yeah. Oh, I believe it. So when does this start? It will start, uh, officially you'll be able to open tickets in our new system on April 20th. Early as next week. April, April 24th. However, we are continuing, um, we have Zoho, our current help desk, through the end of May. Um, after that, it's going away. So in many ways, the sooner you get used to the new system, the better. That goes for us too. Yeah, <laughs> we are also a part of this with you, so uh, you are not alone. Um, if we... On um, there we go. So submit. You know what to do. Submit ticket. Well, I guess scroll down. Okay. Um. So one thing to know about our new ticket system is you need to have an Okta account in order to submit tickets with us. Um. If you already have an Okta account because you have an account for Aspen, that works it's the same with this it's just the same login um if you have not already created an okta account chances are we have it sort of ready and waiting for you to connect um if you already have a zoho account with us so the old help desk we worked with it to get the same kind of like account information moved over so you'll want to use the same email address associated with your current help desk account to create your Okta account if you haven't already created one. And we will be here. Um, most likely you'll be talking to Gil <laughs> if, you're having a, if you're having a hard time um, creating your Okta account. And once you create the account, you'll be able to log in, you'll be able to submit a ticket you will be able to see the knowledge base without logging in, but also if you log in. Um, however, we recommend that you get used to, you know, logging in via Okta because once you log in, you can see your past tickets if they're closed, as well as your open tickets. However, we are not moving old closed tickets from Zoho into ServiceNow. We are, however, backing them up for our purposes so that if we had to find something that happened a long time ago, we'll have some record, but there's right. no easy way to move them so that you can still do that. Um, however, if you know the deadline is coming up and we still have tickets open with you 
in the old ticket system, we will do our best to be moving those over. We just can't in mass move all the old tickets over. It's just not feasible for us. So any any that have been closed and dealt with, those will we will have access to that information. You will not. Um, but you will be able to see your closed tickets once those are closed in service now, if that makes sense. I apologize if I'm confusing the issue. Um, so once we open the our Octa account and get closed, we'll be able to see that closed. You will. Or any currently open tickets. So. Correct. So any of the tickets basically that you create in Octa, uh, in our service desk through Octa, you'll be able to keep track of. Yes. So, so Kylie, just should we try, if we had Aspen, should we try Aspen first? And if that doesn't work, then try our bill host now? Or should we just? Um, like, so if you already have an account in Aspen, you already have an Octa account. Like if you've already logged into Aspen and done like your continuing education credits, for example, or uh, updated your school information, uh, you already have an Okta account. However, if, if if you try logging in via Okta and it doesn't work for you, um, chances are that it's the email associated with your Zoho account. Try that. If it doesn't work, um, that may be the chance where it's just you haven't created it yet. Gil, am I creating work for you already? Is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> um, no, that, that that's uh, that's clear, and um, you know, and if if need be, if, you know, um, I might it would have to be a ticket, and I'll have to like associate some accounts. If there's an existing one, uh, but with what you shared, um, right, that makes sense. So thank you. We will do our best to make that as soon as possible. I mean, um, so. I'm not sure um, how to get to this. Is this the, going to be the landing page? This is going to be the landing page okay. that is going to be located in this top bar. We're not quite sure where it's going to be yet, but we will have documentation coming out about where exactly in this top menu it's going mm -hmm. to be. And if you're on Gov Delivery, you will see announcements of all yeah. of these new links and things. Yeah, thank you, Teal. <laughs> So if you do, let's try submitting a ticket as a board request. Let's try it. So just so you know, this is several months of us doing work with ITSU, which is the state IT to get things set up. Okay. I don't have a citizen log. It's okay. So what you'll end up doing is creating your login. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How did we get to them? I can get to the KB. Show the box. How do we get to the KB from the landing page? I don't. Oh, uh, I just it, you just scroll down. I'm just seeing about. I got the form. Okay. Oh, okay, great. Mel. So Mel very kindly is uh, providing us with an example. This will is what will show after you've logged in through your Okta account, and it will automatically populate your name and the email address associated with that account on how to contact you. Um, if you scroll down a little bit now, you'll see your options of the support team to choose and what those support teams are associated with. So for us, the third one now, Montana Shared Catalog, it tells you, because I know sometimes throwing in the uh, the names of the of the software is not especially helpful. So we have you know our regular acquisitions, cataloging, circulation categories. If you are experiencing a down system, so you don't have a connection, you can't get into workflows, something like that. Um, all of this stuff is in here. Uh, so then you'll in the description. That's the same place to put where your problem is. And as with Zoho, regardless of which help desk we're using, the more information you can provide to us, the better. Um, if you're experiencing a problem, but you try tr troubleshooting it in certain ways, please let us know that. The more we know, the better we can help you. Um, you still have the option to add an attachment. So for example, a screenshot at the bottom, and then you will just be able to submit that ticket. 
Mm -hmm. um, then you'll see a screen showing you it was submitted. Um, so that the basics of opening a ticket are roughly the same. Uh, we believe in you guys. We know you can handle it. Uh, <laughs> and then if we could just go briefly to the, um, the knowledge base. And thank you both very much for your help. If anyone has, uh, well, let me show you the knowledge base first. And then if we have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, so here in um, our whole team is working on moving, migrating our content over right now from Zoho to ServiceNow. We have a ton of the content already in draft form in the back end, but we just got these specific ones published to show you guys today. So when you get to the main page of the knowledge base, which is where we are now, by default, we have these most viewed articles because Laura and I have been tweaking things like crazy. Um, but then on the left-hand side, to the left of most viewed articles, you'll see our categories. And again, not all the categories are here because not all the content is published yet. But um, it will follow roughly the category options for when you open tickets. So you're cataloging. Um, but we also have MSC information and the online patron catalog, which is enterprise. So for example, in the MSC information, right now we have a couple articles published like frequently asked questions. So if you wouldn't mind clicking on that one. And it looks roughly similar to uh, Soho. So just the basic articles. Um, and all we ask is that we're, we're going to do our best to have all this ready for you guys as soon as possible and um, have much more content published by the time we go officially live on uh, April 24th. But please be patient with us as we, we do our best to move things over quickly and hopefully in a, a very nice format. Here, uh, I was just showing off that we have the Mark Tech cheat sheet already moved over so uh please don't please don't stress um and we just really appreciate everyone's um willingness to <laughs> uh accept this change even if you're kind of grumbling about it we we get it we're we've been grumbling about it a little bit too um but we're going to try and make it as nice as we can for you guys because um, we obviously want to provide that level Excellent. Thanks, Mom. Oh, thank you very much. So like I said, here you'll see you can uh, open a support request or a ticket. You can create your Okta account and um, also just email the, the support desk. So that is an option. Uh, you can email without having an account and you can still open a ticket. However, you won't have access to your closed tickets. Those won't be available for you to see, um, which is why we're just kind of strongly encouraging everyone to create their Octa account. Plus that'll give you access to Aspen and you know whatever other associated state programs will be through Octa. So, oh, and here's our main knowledge base page. Thank you. Um, so again, similar, this, this isn't anything hugely new. Um, you'll be able to choose, for most of you, Montana Shared Catalog, but if you have questions for the History Portal, Aspen, uh, other other stuff, you can get there. Thank you, Mel. Um, and it will be similar when you're opening a ticket as you start typing in, you know, the title of your ticket or describing what's going wrong for you. There will be suggested articles as well. So we'll, we'll try to uh, have those be as accurate as possible for you. Amy's coming, everyone. <laughs> you don't have to put up with me much longer. Um, excellent. Um, are there any questions about the new help desk, also known as ServiceNow? Yes. So when my front desk gets logged out, mm -hmm. they just email it back in. Like when they when they uh, put password into Trump, they 
they need to switch over if the email just fine with that or they're better um you could email to open a ticket. Yeah. Also, if you get locked out, I think you're going to have to contact Gail, <laughs> maybe, to, to get you access. I don't know if that's a... Is it specifically workflows or just like... Workflows. Just... Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh you're going to want to contact oh. us. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. For, for those of you, I thought you were talking about the tickets. Oh, I meant well. submitting a ticket. That's what I did. So maybe that was the right way. No, so if... Sorry, you're I misunderstood your question. To clarify, um, sorry, if your if your team gets uh, locked out of workflows because they yeah. enter the password incorrectly, which has happened, um, yeah, please open a ticket with the MSC. These folks will will get you to work. We'll get it worked out for you. Sorry, yeah, Amy. Uh, Amy, we're so glad to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what happened. Yeah. They voted it, the shared catalog down because they don't like the idea of libraries not having skin in the game if the MSC is free, but they asked us to bring back an alternate proposal in their special work session where they're going to revisit the other things. So, so maybe we'll get partial. So they're going to rediscuss the same again, special session. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So we did the minutes that got approved. Yep. But we're doing on the budget, right? No, so we did the budget. We skipped everything. Yeah, we're on the budget. budget. We are on the budget. On the budget. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Let me pull this up because this is the really important thing, right? Is especially now. Yeah. Now that now that we have to pay spell. Uh, this year. So we have the draft budget, which was posted online, and hopefully everybody saw it. And I probably need to share my screen for the people online. Yeah. Although I don't know if it. So this is. Um, I get rid of this. So this is our budget for fiscal year twenty twenty five. It's fairly straightforward. It's very similar to previous years. Um, we have the estimated re revenue from you, our members, the state general fund coal severance tax, the state library pays $100,000. Um, and then as we go down to the expenses, this first section is uh, the MSC staff, MSL indirect services. This is, I think part of statute is that any project has to pay through the state, you have to pay a percentage of your budget for the things that you utilize state services for. And then our Circe Dynex fiscal year 2025 renewal, which is um, fixed as per our contract at 279, 751. We pay 150 to Kasugi, which is customers of Circe Dynex user group. Uh, that fee is basically insurance on the Circe Dynex software. So if Circe decides to go under <laughs> or quit doing our particular software. Um, it's in their contract that they have to give that software code and all the documentation that they have to Gosugi, and then we would be able to utilize that until we transition off. So we can't ever be caught unawares with not having a system. That's basically their insurance. Um, and then we have some meeting expenses. Uh, for the content management committee to meet in person. And then we have, um, if the MSC members want to have an in-person meeting in fiscal year 2025, which as we can see, it works very cheap for us to do it at MLA, but that doesn't always work when we're out scheduled at the same time as the commission meeting. So um, <laughs> we have those two um, budget, two items in the budget. Um, for covering that. And then this FTE contribution is, I want to say it's two and a half, but it might be two and two thirds. That would be a care question. Um, of the MSC FTE and the rest of that is covered through LSTA. So we split it half and half, I'm pretty sure, with LSTA for the staff. Are there any questions? So then you take our expenses total group contribution, which we have to do at an even number on the cost share formula. So they give us a little bit of overage that would go into our um, proprietary reserve fund and we would just hold that money 
when we sometimes run into unexpected um, expenses or if we want to decide it as a group to buy something from something new from Circe Donics, we can apply this to lower that amount. So any questions about that? So if somebody wants to move, we can talk about the cost share formula at the same time. I don't know if we want to just approve the budget and we'll talk about the cost share formula for next year's formula. So for, for, for the formula that for the formula that got this this five hundred and nine thousand. So yeah, they're probably in reverse order. For the draft cost formula, um we, as you know, we have a fairly convoluted cost sharing formula in the past three or four years, instead of using that formula, which um, has been sort of problematic and resulted in large drops for people or jump giant jumps in their amount. We've done flat increases um, just to keep up with our, we have our contract with Cersei Dynix goes up a tiny bit each year uh, to cover that and our, any changes in in benefits and things like that. So this year to cover um, our budget needs would be a 4.25% flat increase. Yeah, we're not sharing on right now. Switch. What was the last year in comparison? I think it was, it was either four or five. Can somebody... I, I so do they they stay within that range? We try really hard to yeah to stay four to five percent in yeah increase. Yeah, it's it's mostly to cover the change in um Cersei services. If you scroll in Aspen all the way back to last year's yeah. meeting, it will be on there. And I have it, but I don't know if I have the um, yeah, yeah, spring. Are there any questions about this one? Everybody hopefully got a chance to see this. This has been posted in Aspen for several weeks. But for it to be in effect, I need a motion, a second, and voting on either or both of these together. The motion to approve the budget. Yeah, and the cost share form. Please stay here, Oh, <laughs> I'm Karen May Hall of Billings Public Schools. Oh, Becky is saying last year was 3%. Okay, yeah. last year, okay, so it did go up. Yes. Yeah. I move to you'd like the budget first. I have no preference of order. I move to approve the Montana Shed catalog budget for fiscal year 2025. Outstanding. I, Tina Peterson, the Burlington Public Library, will be the Any further discussion? Any discussion in the chat? So the, it's been moved and seconded to approve the MSC fiscal year 2025 budget. Um, all in favor, please say aye or type aye in the chat. Aye. And any opposed, please say nay or type no in the chat. In the chat, I'm sure. Is okay. Right. Sounds like that passed. So if we want to do then for the cost sharing formula. Jan Washburn, Mark County City Library. I move to the cost sharing formula. What was your name? Shannon Washburn. It has been moved and seconded to approve the cost sharing formula for 20 fiscal year 2025 for the share catalog. Any other discussion about that? <clears throat> all right, all in favor, please say aye or type aye in the chat. Aye. Okay. All opposed, say nay or type no in the chat. So the motion passes. Thank you all very much. Um, so I think we're done with our action items.
very efficient. <laughs> Even though we started two hours late. Um, so CARE, I think, is still in the commission meeting. Um, the standardized cost formula, you guys skip that as well. Yes. That has gone out to directors. This is our discussion with the NAC and with um, Ashley, who at the shared at the state library is one of our accountants, um, to remove that crazy complexity with the cost sharing formula so that it's easier for everybody to tell much further in advance how much your um, cost will be. And for things like if you take a bunch of patrons out who haven't been in your library in 10 years, your cost won't drop. Or if you decide you want to register, you know, you bring in two preschools and register all of them, your cost doesn't then go up $5,000, which we've had happen with our current cost sharing formula. Um, so we've been working on a standardized cost formula. Is that one of the meeting minutes like, or one of the meeting materials we posted? Oh, no, I don't think it is. It got emailed out. It's in draft right now. Um, where, yeah, so it's in draft, it's going to the NAC, but I think Kara just wanted to be available for questions if anybody, because I think it's been sent individually to directors in draft. Just, yeah, to everybody. So I might be able to answer questions if there are any. So no, draft, draft is no, that's our, that's this four that's point, this point. Yeah, 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 so it's, you're drafting a new cost share formula the, completely. Mm -hmm. And it's so, going to be based, instead of being based on circulation mm -hmm. and title and number of patrons, it would be based on service population. So it even, I mean, it balances out. It's much more stable. And many of our other MSL services are based on service population. So it standardizes that a lot. Too. So like you'd be based on the city of Billings for the, for the Billings public and for your schools, it would be enrollment. So yeah, the, the, the base population has a slightly different definition for each library. So for publics, it's your service area population. For schools, it's your enrollment. And for specials, it depends on what kind of special you are, whether it's like FTE, like the medical libraries, it's employees of the medical, of the hospital that's affiliated. It's, uh, Becky said in chat that it's enrollment plus staff for schools. Oh, enrollment plus staff for schools. Oh, and that's being combined. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it ours is going up both at our library though. And for the school part, enrollment has not gone up. So I'm guessing our you know, county and our service area than what our county might be actually giving us. And then, uh, yeah, and that that. yeah, I will write that down because I'm not sure. I know so the the school publics are on their own tab in the spreadsheet, I think. But yeah, I will double check that if that we're using um, to see what we're using if it's how your county is calculating versus your. Yeah, and, and the other thing about that that I should mention is um, we know there will be some swings, people going up and people going down, and if that does get implemented, there will the plan at this point is to have a, um, a gradual implementation. So nobody has a huge jump or a huge drop in one year and then it starts going up again. We would try to level those out and for the people who are going to see big changes. Just like, you know, Karen in the chat, Karen Huck said, uh, what is special based on? And Becky Dupre uh, took the blurb, I'm assuming, from the email. Uh, the email and pasted it in the chat about academic libraries. And I believe it's all how the specials are broken down. Um, yeah. From Karen's email, yes. Yeah. So just so everybody's aware, that's what's going on in chat right now. Yeah, and the, 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 the question was from the Genealogical Society, which is, doesn't really have a service so yeah the special libraries are would sort of probably think in some cases end up with some unique the calculation would be just for their library um after i think after the nac looks at this they're going to look at it in their next meeting but i think they're not voting on it until the meeting after that so if they vote on that then we see the estimates again. 
Um, and then it would come to this group for a vote to adopt it as our cost sharing plan. So there, there will be um, more emails, I think, from us where, because um, as after it goes to the NAC and they look at this newest version to see if there's any changes or what adjustments we need to make. So it will be several months, I think, before we see anything concrete. And then uh, Becky posted again in the chat, we are seeking your feedback and questions regarding this proposed change in advance of the NAC's May 1st, 2024 meeting. At the main meeting, the NAC will review the draft formula, implementation strategy, and library feedback. The NAC will take action at their August 24 meeting, 2024 meeting in order to adopt a cost formula before the fiscal year 2026, so starting July 1st, 25 budget year. Um, this formula will not go into effect for the coming budget year. This will year 2025. Right, which and then Friday, started. April 26th is the public comment period, or I guess I'm assuming the end date for May 1st or start date. Thank you, Becky, for yeah, having all of that on hand. <laughs> that was what Kara would say if she was in the room. But yeah, so if you, uh, um, I can take questions. You can send email questions to Kara, or I'm not entirely sure how the NAC wants public comment on that. Um, but I I can find out from Kara and we'll send it. We'll include it in the next MSC update for their reading tubes for the NAC. Mm -hmm. So that was just information. Uh, so then the next thing on uh, the agenda is the legislative session and resource sharing request, which just got voted down by the commission. So I don't know that we have a lot to discuss on that, but they did ask us to come back to them with a, um, a revised. So we are probably do something about if they can take, because they were, they didn't like the idea of taking all 488,000 that the members pay. So we might just do a reduction and see if we can get them to cover at least portions so everybody's bill would go down somewhat. Okay. Um, and I, yeah, I, to jump into now we're at the MSC system updates and I should start with like, I apologize for sort of how disjointed we've been with the commission meeting at the same time. Doing it at the a members meeting at MLA seems like such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it almost worked for us. Ah. Uh, just not on the same day as the commission. Yeah, it needs to be a different day. <laughs> Maybe we could squeeze it. It's one of the shorter, to the, one of the longer session options. Um, but yes, MSC system updates. We are still working on implementing the new products that came in our last um, Cersei Dynex contract, which was, I think, two years, year and a half ago now. Um, we've got kids catalog is up and running. can't remember the other new things. Um, it's kind of like auto renewals new. new. We're going to be talking about several of these new Symphony things. Web. Symphony Web is um, now available. That's the online version of workflows. Um, we've been testing it. We're just now at the point where if you are interested in using that, um, it's so it's you just log into a browser and it sort of workflows in the browser instead of having to install software. Oh, yeah. Do you want to? I don't know if you can. Do you share your screen? Does that share it over here? Yeah, yep. there we go. So that lowers the um, learning curve there. And so if you're interested in this, um, open a ticket and we'll get you set up with it. So it doesn't require an install, like workflows, you know, you need to have, sometimes you need admin it, permissions. Um, things like that to get it installed or have your IT drive over from Lewistown to install it for you. Like, you know, we've got some challenges with our... Uh, there are some caveats for this, though. Um, as we've been testing it, we've run into some issues. I'm going to list what I know about. If I miss anything, then I'll jump in. Um, there is sometimes some lag. Sometimes it doesn't clear boxes that you would expect it to, that it does in workflows, like when you click something, um, you would expect it like There's a page to follow, which, like, you know, that's our favorite part of workflows. Um, 
yeah. Yeah. you can pop. Yes. So we actually have some, some of our libraries where they were testing it. We said, use this, but if just have one close up just in case. Okay, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and as far as I know, receipt printing can be tricky and or doesn't work. Very well, yes. Which yeah. Is, uh, one thing is so, so basically the thing for Symphony Web to keep in mind is if it's not working, for some reason something's going on and it's it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing in the client. It's not going to. Um, there, there's really not a lot of things we can do. It's just a delivered product from Cersei Dynex, and they're not really focusing their energy on updating it. Uh, and there's they're not really fixes like in the client where we could do some workarounds or we can we can play with it. Symphony Web is really just it is as it is. It's the stopgap between workflows and. Wow. Well, that's what I was just going to remind you all that they are working very heavily on Blue Cloud, which is going to replace this eventually at yes. some day, maybe. But we have seen some of the tests of Blue Cloud circulation, and it is much better. Yes. So they're working towards that. You can use any web browser. Um, I believe Firefox is not super recommended but it works it's it works. just a wonky it's just wonky um but all of them should work and yes. we have we have i want to say i found, feel like i heard feedback from one library that it was faster than the workflows because they kept getting kicked kicked out of workflows because of the heartbeat thing where you know it needs to have constant so if your internet goes to sleep yeah, yeah. or your network central network like shuts you down and then your workflows you come to check someone out and it's like it has logged out Can you this is like you have an okay button there like you have a choice yeah. no it's just going to shut down <laughs> so if i have another question about the phone, for example if i am let's say she was talking let's say i'm at work i'm logged into the client on my desktop but then i want to go use inventory and i don't have workflows installed on this laptop and i go in and i do that will the client be updated like when I go back, oh, they all go to the same database. It, so it, yeah. it all updates. It's it. all yeah. live. Okay. So it's all live. Yeah, it's not like a full date. So oh, yeah. check, so, was... so if I check out an item to a student using the browser version, I'll see it in the client yeah. version. Yes. yes, it's the same same time. Same exact thing. Yeah. Like if you have two separate clients open okay. at the same time, it should work the same. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm going to repeat the question real quick for the people online in case they couldn't hear you. The question was if you have, say, Symphony Web out on a laptop in the stacks and you're inventorying and then you go back to the desk and look at your workflows those items that you just inventoried will be live that they just were inventoried in workflows they're connecting to the same database on the back end and they're both live up to the transmission to mm -hmm. um, if you do go with symphony web we're not saying to uninstall the client we would keep it just because if your internet does go down Obviously, Symphony Web doesn't have an offline mode because it's through a browser. So you want to still have that client on your computer. So Symphony Web is available. We're, we'll next be working on um, the community, community, customer, customer engagement, community, community yeah, engagement platform. platform. Um, their Blue Cloud visibility, which makes searches of items in Google show up if you have it. Right, on the catalog, so if somebody searches for a book in Google and they live down the street from your library, it will pop up. Um, e Resource Central, where it will sort of sideload the Montana Library to go. So they show up in the search results and people can click through to them, but we don't have to load those records and take them out manually. Um, and then Data Control, which you guys will never see, but it's on our side, it's a thing that will help us with batch changes and stuff like that. So those are be in the coming months. Um, in between community engagement platform and data control, what's the product? Um, B Blue Cloud Visibility okay. is the Google search one, and then E Resource Central is the. There's a question in the chat from Becky asking, uh, "What about the OverDrive integration? Is E Resource Central the same as customer engagement?" Yeah. So customer engagement is. They've been doing a lot of changes to that program while we've been waiting for them to give it to us. Um, it's where you could do sort of tailored emails and things to your patrons. Like we'll set you up in there and you'll be able to get in and well, 
you don't know that you will. You might not want to, but you could say, please send this newsletter to all my patrons who have things that you guys have asked us for in the past. Can you send my survey to all my patrons? We need to let everybody know that they, can you send my patrons who have children, something about the summer reading program, things like that. That's what the community engagement platform is. Um, it's basically fancy emails and tracking. Um, the overdrive is going to be in eResource e Central, where um, it basically is a plug-in to our enterprise, our online card catalog that allows those um, third-party collections to be loaded. I know Overdrive exists as a connector, and Hoopla exists as a connector. I know some of you have other things like Access 360 or Canopy or other things I can't think of. Those could potentially go be connected in eResource Central, but we have to um, would have to contract with Cersei Dynex to um, create the connector between eResource Central and that third party vendor, so they won't be immediately available. I had to shut down. I don't know about you guys, but if I could see myself talking. Okay. So, so you're looking at the OPAC side is going to, going to be our our Sora yeah, you, kind of library to go. Yeah, you will still be able to, like, Montana patrons too. will still be able to use those, like, they'll be able to use Libby if they go to Montana Library to go, or the Sora with the right. cool pictures. Yeah. Yeah. What will happen, that will all still exist. What will happen is if they search in Enterprise and you have it in one of those programs, it will show up as another search thing and they can click on it and it will take them to Overdrive or to Sora, which is what, it, that didn't really happen when we had them in the system before. Like you could see that it was in Montana Library to go, but then they had to like manually go yeah, to Montana really Library to go. So I wonder if this will be for the people who always order a book chat kit and set it up right they don't they which, don't one, which one they actually want i think it will as far as i remember from the demos i've seen it does make it pretty clear which ones are that it's an ebook or that it's a physical one. so any questions about any of that any more questions great auto renewal yeah all right not sure that I need to necessarily make it short. Yeah, I gotta come talk to the camera. Okay, I'll talk to the camera. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> nice to try and walk. Hello. Um, so I just wanted to mention that some of you already know and have been early adopters of auto renewal, which is a new option that we have for people. Um, the way that it works is that we set it up so that if items are eligible for renewal, they will be renewed. Um, and if they're not, then they don't. And that sounds simple, but there's a lot of questions there. If somebody has holds on an item, it's not going to be auto-renewed. If they've already done their maximum number of renewals, which for most items are two, they can't be renewed. But if they're eligible for renewal, just like if they called you and said, hey, can you renew all my items over the phone and you did it for them, it would renew the ones that were eligible. And so if this is something that you think would help your patrons, um, basically, your email notification patrons will get an email telling them, hey, we auto-renewed your stuff. And the people who don't get an email, you could get a list if you wanted to, or you could just let that be a nice surprise for them when their books are auto-renewed. This does not take place of your other notices. So if they get a notice that says, hey, your items are due in a few days, like an early notice, that would still probably apply. And if you have things that go overdue because they couldn't be over uh, auto-renewed, um, those would still get overdue notices. Um, so it's a pretty easy thing for us to set up. We do need you to already have HTML notices set up. So if you haven't done HTML notices for your patrons yet, you would have to do that before you could get auto renewal. Um, we have several members who are already in sharing groups who are doing this, even though their whole sharing group has not decided to. So you don't have to do it as a group if you don't want to. However, uh, Gallatin County chose to do it all as a group, which is awesome. Um, and it seems to be working. I don't know if anybody wants to make any comments, but you could just give a thumbs up if you have it and it's working well for you. Um, <laughs> as a as a Belgrade Community Library patron, also it uh, worked for me, and I forgot that <laughs> yep. Gail had that the whole um, sharing group had logged on, but I got a nice little email letting me know that. Yep. 
that and item I, that would have been overdue yep. had been renewed. So and my own public library in Cut Bank, the Glacier County Public Library, has also been auto renewing my delinquent account. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's a really nice thing, even if you're a non-finding library, because people forget. Yeah. And sometimes the auto renewal reminds them that they should return the books too. So um, if you're interested in this, put in a ticket. We're obviously here, so we'll look at it next week. Um, but it's a pretty snazzy option if you want it. Plus extra statistics. Yes, and yep. you do get the extra stats from auto renew. And we're working on a report to get you the statistics as well. But you know how many come from auto renew specifically. So I, they, I do. They're in this folder unless you added anything to Daniel. No, I did not. Okay. okay, and then just on that, um, since just a, a shameless plug for our HTML notices as well. Those are our email notices. Let me. Yeah. Okay, so these are our HTML email notices. I grabbed three forks because I love the colors. <laughs> <laughs> so the options we have for this are basically any email notices that you're doing, we can replace with a newer format so they look more visually popping, more eye-catching. Uh, we like them, we recommend that you do it. Uh, and then again, if you want auto renewal, we do request that you go to this format. Um, but the more important notice that I wanna show you guys today that is kind of our best kept secret that we're now telling you guys about um, are our BCA notices. I know so many acronyms. I know. <laughs> Blue Cloud <laughs> Analytics. Right. Sorry, guys. We type them a lot, so we make them short, but we apologize. If you ever if you ever say an acronym that you wonder what it is, please just ask us because we don't expect you to have them all memorized. We know there are millions. <laughs> Maybe we need to make a Google Plus article. Yeah, we we'll do. It's it on our list. We just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I make it. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm having difficulties with Amy's computer. Yeah. Which one? Ah, yeah. there it is. So, gone are the days of reformatting and removing margins and spaces in workflows notices that you print to your and mail to your users. Uh, we can generate this in PDF form that goes directly to your inbox every day, so you don't even need to open Blue Cloud Analytics to get to it. Um, this Belgrade Community Library, they use window envelopes for both their library and the patron name, and we have it formatted, so all they have to do is fold it, it fits perfectly, and they just put a stamp on it and mail it. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> glad to hear it. Um, we can add logos, obviously. Uh, we can, just like in the workflows notices, mess with your verbiage, what you're saying. We have customization over what displays here. So your title, your author, we can add in item prices. If you charge processing fees, we can add that in, do a grand total. Um, this is for our, our overdue notices, our assumed loss notices. Uh, if you mail hold pickup notices still, we could do it for that. Random bill notices, just open just a ticket. A plug for those of you who maybe don't want to mail, if you're getting this notice in workflows at, because you're calling everybody, we can create a better list in BCA Yes, your call list. and have that email to you daily so you don't yeah. have to open Blue Cloud Analytics as well. And that's with any report in Blue Cloud Analytics. If you don't want to go in there, we can set up an email subscription. It goes right to your inbox, and you can get all the information that you need and not have to click through a bunch of screens. Well, is it yeah. something like for schools that you could just have a one-time end of the year, this is what's still out? Yes, and I have a school example as well just because I came prepared for that. <laughs> so I shamelessly stole Missoula County Public Schools. They've been on this, I think, one of the starting libraries. But this is their school notice, and this is for their checkouts. You can have it just for end of year. We can just say, hey, start that email list, and we can start doing it. Uh, Lolo, they have a, a very nice letter that we have formatted that now goes to them twice a month and they print it and mail it home. It's got great 
verbiage, everything that's been approved by the school board, we plugged it all in there. Things are bold or underlined, however you want. Um, I should have grabbed an example of that, but I don't have it, unfortunately. No weird line breaks. No weird line breaks. <laughs> so and if you want either email notices or the BCA notices, if you're on the email notices and you want the BCA notices, just open a ticket and we'll get you set up. And a KB article will be coming soon. Yep. In our, in our new knowledge. In our new knowledge base. Um, on it. I do, but did you do a new one or no? Okay. Yes, question. Um, is anything happening for mobile staff? Um, mobile staff, there's nothing new with mobile staff. You can still just use it. If you if if you yeah. um need it, you need the little code again to put it on like a new device, just open it again. We can send you the link and the code. But Sorry, I was going to share for you live. Yeah, please do that. I wish I could leave this little guy and get go away. People are not against me. It's not yet. It's just lost. But people are not against me. All right. Okay, um, one other new thing that I've been working to get set up is called Mark Listener. And so this isn't useful to everyone, but the few people that it is, there's no going back. Literally, once you use it, no going back. So Mark Listener, so if you work, do any cataloging, original cataloging, editing, or even just searching in OCLC Connection, where you primarily go for original cataloging, you can, we can now set you up. So with the click of one little button, the click of that little button right there, this record will go straight into Workflows. You don't need this Mark port. It'll just like go right in there. But you have to be in connection. So a lot of people, if you just in workflows, smart, um, add your items to existing bibs already in there, and you don't, you're not you're creating right. new records really. This probably isn't going to be for you. But if you are already in OC in OCLC products, doing cataloging work or searching work, we can set you up. So with the click of one button. The new record will come in. It can overlay an existing record if you do some enhancements, which we always encourage to these records. It'll come right, come right in more close. You won't even need to smart. I, I know. <laughs> like I said, there's no going back. So there is a little bit of setup, though. So like, you open a ticket, and I'll get it. I'll do some back-end config, and then I'll send you instructions for what you need to do in your um, connection. Uh, your downloaded connection client. You go into tools, select options, up pops a box. I give you the information to fill this part out. You click OK, you're done. It's really awesome for those okay. who work in connection. You yeah. said you went into tools, smart options, is that what you said? She'll send you instructions. Yeah, you'll get oh. the instructions because you can't set this up until I, I do some back end. Oh, okay. <coughs> So if you're currently so using Smartport, yeah. So yes, yeah. If you're using Connection, so to clarify, if you're currently just using Smartport to find records and bring them down, um, and that works for you, yeah. That's this, this is isn't this isn't necessarily a change. That no, you make. it's not. Um, if you're you if you. Make the commitment, because it's a commitment, to learn how to use OCLC products for cataloging. It's a commitment, not going to lie. I would do it for, probably, I would recommend to do it for cataloging first. And then you're in that software and you're comfortable with it. And then I find it an easier way to search than SmartPort. But it's because I've already had that time commitment into learning that it's additional software. 100%. It's a yeah. separate training that we that, and we don't offer that don't training. Do. OCLC's got a ton of amazing training support for their product, um, and so once you're in there and comfortable with it, we can make it really easy to bring records from that software in the workflows. So if you're not creating records from scratch, if you're just going and finding a record and bringing it in, you don't need this probably. So that would be cool. yeah. But if you are creating original records, it's pretty snazzy, and we're really happy. But well, you're one of our special libraries that's constantly changing yep. your records and updating and enhancing. 
So do you have to have a downloaded client or is it working for us advantage? That's a good question. So I this might come up. Thank you. <laughs> so some of you who again are doing work in OCLC connection are are aware that the, there was a a browser version of connection. So this the screenshot here is of the downloaded client version. There's been available a uh, browser version of connection for doing this type of work, cataloging work. And that end of life is the 30th, April 30th. So OCLC has replaced their web-based cataloging option with a product called Record Manager. Starting May 1st, if you need to do what if you because it's hard to get your IT to download software or for whatever reason, you need to use a web-based um, tool from OCLC tool. Record Manager is what, what you gotta use starting May 1st. And as of right now, I can't get this to work with Record Manager, but I'm not the only one asking CRC Dynex, like, come on, let's, we want this to be able to offer this for Record Manager too. So right now it's just perfect. Uh, I hear that while I was gone, you talked about web delivery and service now, but were there questions about any of that that you thought of in the meantime? You won't hurt my feelings, everyone, if you have questions. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should stress and emphasize that the service now rollout, um, it goes live next Wednesday, but we have to tell the end of May before our current contract with Zoho ends. So we'll be sending you how to's and reminding people. And if you open a ticket in Zoho, we'll transfer it over for you. And it's full stress. New ticket system, but same great service. <laughs> um, so the next thing I want to talk about is a new thing that we MSC staff will be doing with you, the librarians. Um, we're calling it Librarian Configuration Assessment. And we have not actually given this a cool acronym yet. No, so we don't need to. No, we probably won't. But um, basically what we plan to do is um, sort of an in-depth review of every library's configuration. Uh, we will be checking each module in the system, making it set up sure it's set up in the way that works best for you. Some of our libraries have been in the system for 22 years, and some of you have been in for six months. The ones who have been in, you know, for six or eight months, the circ rules are probably how you set them when you came in. But some of the times there's little, for the libraries that have been in longer, there are things that it's like, oh, I did not know that was configured, or huh, there's one little section that just didn't get changed when we made that change six years ago. Or how about I didn't know that there was anything as configured. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, it does that? Yeah, it does that. So we um will be then talking to me and then talking to all of you to make sure you know what all the options that are available. So maybe you didn't know you could go find free. Uh, maybe you didn't know we could change it so you didn't have processing fees on your assumed lost items. Like we can make those changes. So we'll be going over those um, with you. And we'll start by, on our side, pulling a bunch of information and pr presenting it to you. Like, here's how you're set up, in case you didn't know about any of these super secret, but really just never got mentioned settings. Um, and then we'll go over those settings with you and go through some questions and make any changes that you ask about. Um, and then you'll have a nice overview of how your system is set up, which is not to give you guys more work, but then you could look at your policies and see where they don't match. Um, because there's nothing like, you know, your website says, we do this, and the system does not do that to make patrons really mad. Um, it will also will, that will give us a chance for things to questions, I think, to come up organically, be like, oh, well, it always does this, can we change that? It will be in depth, so it's going to take us some time to work through every library. So um, we're thinking probably like a year or maybe more as we work through libraries. We might get faster as we go, just because this will be new for us. Um, but we will be in touch with people as we start going through and come up with ways to schedule it at times that work for you. But yeah, so that's a new thing we came up with because we, we get questions where we realize that we have a lot of libraries that 
maybe don't know all the settings, especially if you've had director turnover, right? Like, who knows what the person before you decided? Questions? Um, yes, there's a checkbox that does that. You want to turn the page? Mm hmm Per patron. It pops up a little. Do you want to print a receipt? And you just click cancel. Oh, so this time we tried to do that. Then when we wanted to print a whole we have to print a whole That does sometimes happen. That's a alert. Mutually exclusive settings. But we can sometimes work around that. You know, when I was, this is a long time ago, so I don't know if Gail will remember this. I was still at Belgrade when we were trying that. And we ended up, we just had like a separate computer and we printed all our whole wrappers on that computer. <laughs> so. We can talk about during your check-in. Yeah. <laughs> when questions like that, you're like, where you're like, is this something you can do? Hopefully nobody still has the thing where it pops up in a separate window if the item was already checked in. And if you do, please open a ticket. We will fix that for you immediately. But things like that, where it's little properties that will save you 10, 100 clicks in a day that you just didn't know about. Well, especially like at the school level, we get new librarians coming in all the time. And I was just often writing email because we don't have a system to train our new librarians right now. So something, an in-depth look at how things are set up. Yeah. And, will and then it, you'll have a printout. Yeah. And when the new person comes in, you can say, here's how your stuff is set up. Yeah. So... That's a new thing we're doing. And then just on that, it's it's not just workflows. We'll also be looking at Blue Cloud Analytics and Enterprise, how that's all set up, um, and, and all the other programs as well. Yeah. No we'll problem. look at your reports. Overall. And yeah. be like, here's all the reports you have running, and they do this. Did you know that? Do you yeah. still want them? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a new thing. Um, Blue Cloud Mobile App, just as an update in case you didn't see on our system updates, it's back. We had um, we had about as much notice that it was going back up as we did that it was going down. Um, so it went down in November. Cersei had a contract dispute with the third party vendor who created the app um, that they had been trying to resolve. It didn't get resolved. So the third party app pulled the plug and went down in November. Um, Cersei was working on negotiating with them the entire time, apparently. And in the middle, the end of March, we heard that it was going to be coming back up within the next three or four days, and then it did. So it's back up. You can tell your patrons to use it again. Um, as far as what's next, so I'm not, Cersei, as far as I know, hasn't released the details of what arrangement they came to with the third party vendor. But what we do know is that Cersei has moved development of the app in house so that this can't happen again. Um, they're calling their the updated version, they're calling it Blue Cloud Mobile 2 to provide maximum confusion. Um, I think that's just going to be for the on the on the sysadmin side. Um, they're working on it. It's it's in existence right now, but since they've made this arrangement with the third party vendor, um, they want to put more polish on it before they roll it out. When it's ready, which right now we're hearing June, but we'll see. It should be as fully functional. We will switch over to that. It will be seamless on the patron side. In the If they download it from the Play Store today or from the Apple Store today, when we get the new version, it will just be like an app update on your phone. So no, oh, patrons, delete this, download a new one. It's going to be seamless. Um, it will be the in-house version, and Cersei is cutting us a cost break um, to make up for the hassle so and it will have more customization options the um thing where we hit, you had to pay special extra money to get a template that was set up just for your library in the new version we will have that the sort of the enterprise level of customization for every library as far as we can tell from what we've seen so far so that's where we are with the mobile app any questions It wasn't a great look for Cersei <laughs> or that third party bit because we're like, um, yeah, we did. We were accruing credit while it was down. They weren't charging it for us. So we've got some accrued credit that will, um, if we come up with something to purchase with it, otherwise they'll just apply it to our, to lower our bill a little bit. 
Any questions about any of that? Okay. So our last thing is, so we're gonna do a uh, BCA report spotlight, little quick session just to show you some new things that are coming or that exist. Um, I'm just gonna be talking about the first part though. You might have to show yourself. Yes. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to be doing, and we're going to be making this change uh, sometime next week once we get back from MLA, of course, is we're going to be condensing down Blue Cloud Analytics. Right now, when you open it, that top level, once you click into shared reports, it's a little daunting. There's a lot of folder options, a lot of them that you may or may not really understand where it's going to lead you to. So we're going to condense it down just like the workflows module. So it's a little bit more user friendly, a little bit more intuitive for you guys. Um, and this is kind of what we have right now. It's very blurry, but basically acquisitions, cataloging, circulation, uh, serial control if you use it. If you're in a sharing group, you'll, see still, you'll still see that folder. Um, we'll bring some things top level, inventory reports will stay since everybody uses that so frequently and it's kind of, uh, I don't know the word I want to use, Which one? an outlier, I think that's the word I want to use, yeah. an outlier to the whole system, uh, same thing with BlueCloud Mobile, also your uh, public library annual state statistics. Um, from there, we are going to also kind of break down inside those folders to make them a little bit more intuitive as well. So this is just a glimpse into the circulation folder. So at this time, the only thing we're changing is kind of how it's organized. So you're going to have everything kind of condensed down in that top level, and they're just all going to nest inside the circulation folder, for example, like bills, holds, checkouts, users, all that information is going to be just in the circulation folder. Over time, what we're gonna go do is we're gonna start paring down reports. We're gonna start combining reports because right now we have six reports that do the same thing, but just tell you that information in a slightly different way. And it can be kind of confusing um, and a little daunting, especially just going in there going, which report is it? Which one do I need? So that's our plan. Uh, we're hoping to kind of work through this. I don't know if any of you have been in Blue Cloud Analytics lately, but there's a lot of reports in there and there's a limited amount of us to do it. So it'll be over time. When we do make radical changes, we'll put that in our gov delivery so you can understand just where we move things or what happened to reports. Um, we're not just going off and, and doing what we think. Uh, for the last six or seven months, uh, Sociodynix has developed a platform analytics report so we can see the most popular reports, what's getting used and what's not getting used. So the first thing that's gonna get chopped are all the ones that are not getting used. Because <laughs> um, obviously they're, they're not helpful for you guys. And then from there, we're just gonna kind of go through and merge or change how they are or how they function. So that's our uh, overarching plan. Like I said, we're gonna start implementing this, this big move next week. Search box, will continue to Search box will continue to work. Your library folder is not going to change. Your individual library folder. Unless you want it to. You just have to open a ticket and we can help you with that. If you have reports in there that you're not using anymore, let us know. Are there any questions on the reorg that we're doing? Becky asks in chat, if they show the same thing but slightly different, will there be more options on our end to change how we view the results? Yes and no. Um, it depends what the report is. It's not an easy question to answer because everyone is slightly different and uh, how we can control that data is slightly different. Our plan is to hopefully for the ones where you can change the uh, outcome in the reports, we'll either have that sidebar where you can add things over um, or if it's a, dos a dossier, we'll have filtering options that you can toggle on and off to see in the grid visualization. Um, but we'll have more details as we get more into it. That's just our preliminary first steps. And obviously, if you have questions, 
or yeah. concern as we're going. Um, yes. We always want to talk with you guys. So. Definitely so. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to, I think, Kylie's next, if there are no more questions. Hey, you guys are doing great. Oh, yeah. I was Use the mouse, mouse, Kylie. Okay. <laughs> Off this is mine. My phone is just turned off. Um, <laughs> oh, one second. I got, I'll share. It's on in here. I will think okay. Oh, but Laura's going to share, I guess. Great. So you can just pull up the Zoom meeting. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so there are a couple uh, specific reports that we wanted to highlight. Um, our sys admins, particularly Laura, have been working really hard on these. And so we wanted to just draw a little attention to them. I'll be talking about them a little bit more in the session tomorrow. Thanks, Laura. Um, the first couple are related to our records that have Montana tribes related subject headings uh, in them. So you'll be able, this first one, Montana tribes title lists with item counts. So it's your basic list of title um, and associated item counts, but it's based on uh, subject headings, I believe in the six, 50, 610, 610, and 651, 651 tags. Um, and so we're pulling that information and kind of aggregating it here. Uh, you'll see it'll start, I know this is small, but um, we'll also add screenshots to the articles that talk about these. Uh, thanks, Lauren. <laughs> First, you'll see the catalog title uh, and author, publication year, all that. And then um, in the headings above, we have the actual subject headings being referenced. And it, it, in that first um, row after those headings, you'll see the total number of titles. So 170 have Indians of North America referenced as a subject heading, for example. Um, and as you go further to the right, you'll see the other subject headings. Um, and in the article about these reports, it'll show you where these subject headings were pulled from, what we're referencing, um, which resources we're referencing. It's, it's a lot of tribe websites, as well as I believe OCLC, other things like that. And so, uh, and then the, um, so yeah, then you get an item count of how many items you may own of that title that have these headings. So this is just kind of, I'm not saying this is necessarily the first report you should look at if you're um, dipping your toe into the Blue Cloud Analytics pool, mm -hmm. um, but it is there for those of you who maybe want to have a deeper look at certain subject headings. Um, and so, okay, so this was the oh, title list with item count and then is this the next one? Oh, right. Thank you. So um, another cool thing about this report is if you right click or if you click on one of the subject headings that are in the columns. So for example, if you click on the Blackfeet tribe, um, it will take you into the associated headings or the headings that are also associated with that. So it's not just like, Oh, we only looked at this one heading. Here are all the headings associated with Blackfeet. Um, like I said, Laura's been working really hard on this. So you can kind of dive even deeper and you can get, again, the title and the item counts with that um, from that same report. And then we also have item counts by publication year pulling those same subject headings. So in this perspective, we're looking at um, the subject headings themselves, and then you can see how many items you have divided up by um, when they were published. So as time goes on, you're, you're probably gonna see your numbers go up in a lot of those subject headings as new headings are more accepted and updated. Oh, yeah. We got to see it. So now we're going to just give a quick look at the article that we already have published in 
Zoho and which is um, already being moved over to ServiceNow. But if you have questions, um, if you want to, if you're not sure how to find this report, this is instructions on how to get there in both cloud analytics. They are pulling a lot of data together. So just be patient as this report runs, it'll take a minute. Um, and here's the list of websites that were referenced in trying to find the most up-to-date, uh, accurate subject. So to refer to those. Excellent. Does anyone have any questions about that? I think we will be making more of those with different yeah. Uh, right? This is yeah. one of our exactly. So uh we are looking to make more of these reports based on your interests, your inquiries of other subject headings you may want to uh, um, review similarly. And uh, I think Laura is going to talk about another one of those here shortly. But these were just a couple examples that we came up with that may be of interest to, uh, well, all of our libraries, but definitely some of our libraries. So the one one more report I want to share. I can take your best screen. Um, this we'll grab these screenshots because these reports do take a while. I mean, you know, you all know I like, kind the best of times. Like Who these BCA reports can take out? a while. Um, Would you like one of us to do it? Okay. Everyone's good? Yep. Okay, so we did screenshots because these reports can take a while. It, again, all, BCA reports, depending on the time of day and how many people are on there, can be kind of slow. Um, but these ones that are pulling information from the BIP records, it's a lot of a lot of data, so it takes they can run up extra. So we did screenshots to save you all. So just yesterday, I did this Montana Authors. We you know this is a information people libraries are often interested in i want a list of montana authors i haven't done the kb article for it um i'll kind of explain what's in here because what you mean by montana authors can kind of vary right but not getting too deep into that i'll just show you the report um i picked, picked tarleton are you like <laughs> so it's it presents like uh a regular BCA report. It's a little different now, though, because we might be adding this to more reports. Uh, you pick your library, click Run Report, and then you get taken to another screen that is now filtered by your library. So now all you're seeing are your, I'm pointing to you, <laughs> Tina, right? Yeah. Tina's home locations that her library uses for item cat two and her item category three. So you don't have that big long drop down and like, I, I don't even remember which one's home locations I use right now. So this is a little, hopefully a little more intuitive for you, for everyone. Um, by default, it's going to select all. So that's there. So all, all, this is going to, if you just clicked run right now, you would get all, everything selected. But if, say for this case, your Montana authors, you're like, you know, I just want my Montana authors in my adult collection that you have the option of clicking that. Or I just want the ones in fiction. I just want to know my fiction Montana authors. You have that, those options. Or you can just click run and um, there you go. So here you get a list. Um, it's pulling from six, uh, mark tag 650 was a subject heading that in our cataloging procedures, we give you instructions on how you can add a subject heading for Montana authors. I think some libraries used to do a lot more than they are now. There's not, there aren't a whole lot of um, bibs with that 650 fields that says Montana authors, but the ones that are there, it's bringing those in. And then I kind of hand entered some specific authors. It's like Ivan Doig, right? We want to make sure we've got all Ivan Doig's books in your list even though Montana author 650 isn't in all of his records, but you'll, they'll come up here. And so those are some of the people you're seeing here that hand entered. It's just gonna give you a count. Um, and like with the other report, if you clicked on Montana authors here, you'll get down, taken down a little 
a little deeper and see the uh, a list of the specific Montana authors there. So it's really awesome. So it's, as with any subject heading reports, depends on the cataloging, right? It depends what's in the bib record, what subject headings were in there, how they're entered. But it's, it's what we got. It works pretty well. It's not perfect. Um, with this one in particular, rather than hand entering every Montana author, um, I would probably be directing folks to how to update the bib record. And that's where we're at right now. So in these reports, can you have call number? I can do that. It's going to change the display a bit. It's going to it's right. going to monkey with it because it's pulling type information from a title group information versus an item because the call number is on the item right. record versus the catalog record. So it messes with the display a bit. It's possible. I know I was looking at this one in particular. Because so right. I'm just thinking, oh, I want maybe a call number or a barcode right. or something. Like that. So, so I'm just thinking, like, if I want to create a display, this goes back to the question I have earlier right. this year, right? I want a display, and I want to yeah. display and I think, all the short stories yeah. in my library that I'll have to print, like, all yeah. the way to go on the wall. Yeah. I could also just look them all. But it's not very fun. I know. <laughs> so still hunting for that report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Specific subjects. We're moving. We're moving. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is everything we had on our agenda. I wanted to point out that it's two minutes before we were scheduled to end, and some meetings do end on <laughs> a big word, a big page. <laughs> um, but if there's any questions about anything we talk about or anything, or just any questions at all, we have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> or if we'll save you, we'll open it to you. Thanks for all you guys do. And the public school just came on in here, and we're really grateful we did. Check care, do you care to update us on anything? <laughs> we talked about like five, the new posture formula, and then um, is there a specific method that they should use to give feedback to the NAC if they have feedback? That's a great question. Thank you, Thursday. You can email us. Okay, so okay. no, I can. Repeat that. So the answer is um, at this point, we don't think there's a comment form for the NAC meeting. So you can just email or even open a support ticket and we'll pass that information along to the NAC. If you have questions about that or anything you want them to take into consideration when they talk about that formula at their meeting on May 1st. I have a question. Yes. So I have smart report. And so when I go, when I choose OCLC, you have to put it in your number yeah. and your password with it changing to record manager is that going to change that's a great question no it won't okay so i mean want to like compare that so for smartport you're still going to use your connection login and authorization is that that's going to be the same okay if you were to use record manager it is a different login it's a whole different password to login i heard from oclc that the workaround if you wanted to do record manager is to you can set you can set your password login and password with OCLC for record manager, and you can set it to be the same as your connection. So I'm looking at like Anne. but yeah. So for Smartport, just use your same number and password that you've been using. Okay. I was going to say the commission meeting is still going on. They <laughs> are at the formation or the Trust for Montana Libraries Memorandum of Agreement. If you're curious or interested, they appear to be. At about 145. Yeah. Okay. On their agenda. Thank you all for your patience as we've moved from room to room and had a big long break before we started and then went completely out of order on our agenda. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for passing our budget. So we will keep going for another year. Um,
Remember to open tickets if you have any questions. We love tickets. Sometimes we're a little slow at getting back. Oh, yes. And if you haven't been on the sign-in sheet because you were in the commission meeting when it went around, the sign-up will put you on the roll call. Oh, somebody want to end? Yes.